Graduates, I want to begin by telling you how immensely proud I am of each and every one of you. I am so proud of the many academic and personal achievements that have earned you a seat here today. And I am proud of the exceptional education your University of Florida diploma represents. Family members and friends and faculty, I know that you too are proud of all that you have contributed to these graduates and to the future they will inherit. And graduates, you too deserve to be proud of what you've learned at the University of Florida and to have pride in your knowledge. That's what commencements are all about, celebrating all that you know. But today, I'm going to switch things up a bit. I want to celebrate the importance of what you don't know. Now, I trust that many of you share my frustration at the intellectual hubris we sometimes see here at universities, in our culture, and even in our politics. I bet that you too have been frustrated by the inability to get past this hubris and maybe to change someone's mind or simply get them to, to see your point of view. So as I send you off, I want to speak to the underrated value of humility over hubris, of inquiry over, insi over insistence, or insistence, excuse me, and listening over lecturing. But, but wait a minute, it feels a little hypocritical to say this in my full presidential regalia, which after all is designed to convey that I'm a very important person saying very erudite things. So ex excuse me, well, I, I'm going to remove my TAM. That's the official name for this, this hat here. And I've got one more thing. I'm going to get rid of my chain here. This is my, this is my presidential bling. Could you come up here? Now, I, I need that back in about 10 minutes. <laughs> so, so now I'm ready. Graduates, the knowledge and expertise you have honed here is going to serve you so well. It's going to give you answers to tough questions, and I know your answers will be right, and I know those answers are going to be just. When the questions involve conflicting interests, I'm confident your answers will, in the words of Abraham Lincoln, quote, give the greatest good to the greatest number. But I want to stress that even though it will be important for you to have the answers, it's going to be equally important for you to understand when you do not have the answers. It'll be important for you to recognize and even to embrace the moments when you have more to learn or when you, when you understand that your answers may be wrong or just incomplete. We benefit from knowing what we do not know. That's my simple message, one that arises from my own personal experience. I've been fortunate in my 26 months here at the University of Florida serving as president to celebrate many amazing public milestones achieved for this university by our faculty, by our staff, and by our students. But some of my strongest memories are tied to private moments when I've been reminded how little I know and how few my talents are and how much I can learn from others. Now, let me illustrate. I want to show you a brief video up on the screens of some beautiful dancing by our students in the School of Theater and Dance. Now, let me show you some of my own not so beautiful dancing over the last two years at the University of Florida.
So I, I think instead of can't stop the feeling, Justin Timberlake would sing, uh, please stop the feeling if he saw my moves. My attempts at dancing on camera over the past two years have renewed my appreciation of the real dancer's genius and the beauty of dance. And I had a similar feeling in quite a different context. It was an enlightening experience when I dropped in on a sign language class that was taught by UF faculty member Stephen Hardy last fall. It was intimidating for me in that class to try my hand literally at a new language, but it was also refreshing. I loved learning and laughing when the students with them while working on my name sign for Fox. F-U-C-H-S, Fox, that's an F, that's a Fox. <laughs> sign language helps with a name like mine when it's spelled strangely and often pronounced in embarrassing ways. <laughs> We're fortunate here at this university to have an exceptional department of speech, language, and hearing sciences. One of my most powerful experiences of learning from others occurred last summer. It was when I met with our African-American faculty and staff following several national violent incidents, and I heard their personal experiences of discrimination and racism. And it was far more important for me as a leader to listen at that moment rather than to talk. And by the end of that two-hour conversation, everyone was crying, including me, Though, of course, those experiences are just completely outside of my own. Listening is what is needed when you're on the side of angels. That was the side of beloved UF professor and historian Michael Gannon. He died earlier this month at age 89 after a rich life that included being ordained as a Roman Catholic priest, authoring seminal books about Spanish Florida and World War II, and being one of the most revered teachers in the history of the University of Florida. Professor Gannon taught over 16,000 students during his career here. And at the time of unrest on this campus in the 1960s during the Vietnam War, he was supportive of student protesters in their tangles with local police and the university administration. Yet because he listened to all, he was trusted by all. He was known to students as the movement priest. And he was known to the police as our mediator. And he was known to the administration as a trusted go-between. And in that role, more than anyone else, Father Gannon was able to help University of Florida and Gainesville mend divisions and achieve greater justice. Someone who can only shout in angry righteousness, even when they are right, cannot have that same effect. Dante wrote, I love to doubt as well as know. And indeed, the arc of Father Gannon's star begins with questioning ourselves. For when we know that we know very little, it's easy to believe that others may add to our storehouse. And when we're aware that we don't have it all worked out, it's easy to believe that they may have a point. This leads to conversation, learning, understanding, and progress. And from my experience, a simple act of conversation also tends to produce some personal warmth and understanding, even when there are strong disagreements that continue. We saw a public example of that in the very close personal relationship between liberal Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg and the late conservative Justice Antone Scalia. May daring to converse produce more such friendships among our leaders and among ourselves. The French philosopher Montaigne wrote, I prefer to be quiet rather than clever. And that gets me to my final point, which is that striving for cerebral humility over hubris also opens us up to insight and even revelation. To me, Sting is a great songwriter. But like many great artists, he doesn't point to his incredible talent when explaining his creative process. A melody, Sting wrote, is always a gift from somewhere else. You just have to learn to be grateful and pray that you'll be blessed again some other time. Well, graduates, you are poised to compose your own melodies. Whatever your plans, 
whatever your destination, you will soon begin the very next stage of your life anew. And for many of you, as you start this next stage, you're going to feel like you know very little, perhaps the way you did the very first day here at UF. But since you are Gators, I have every faith that you will quickly get your bearings and realize that you are prepared to overcome any challenge. But as you rocket forward, remember to carry with you what it felt like to know very little. For if you, re will, if you remain willing to embrace your intellectual humility, you will always continue to learn. You will always stay open to other ideas and perspectives, ready to pursue the truths and the triumphs that are only achievable when human beings choose humility over hubris, inquiry over insistence, and listening over lecturing. Now, before I put back on my TAM and retrieve my personal presidential bling, <laughs> let me leave you with an old Irish blessing. And it ex this expresses my personal affection for each one of you. May the sun shine gently on your face, and may the rain fall soft upon your fields. May the wind be at your back, and may the road rise to meet you, and may the Lord hold you in the hollow of his hand until we meet again. Graduates, congratulations. It is great to be a Florida Gator.